So now that we've talked a bit about the structure of gene ontology, let's now talk about how genes are assigned annotations from that ontology. So at the core of the gene ontology database are a large is a large collection of human curators whose job is to you know primarily go through the scientific literature at large and mine for annotations of genes being characterized for performing certain functions or being located within certain cellular compartments. And so because this is obviously such a huge undertaking, uh, because gene ontology records gene function for many different organisms, uh, many different databases and their uh, people basically take part in this effort for annotating genes. Um, and one of the most useful aspects of gene ontology on top of the fact that they generate these annotations for each gene and across different genomes is that they use what's called evidence codes to keep track of what kinds of evidence do they find that suggests that a gene performs a certain function or belongs to some particular process. And so one of the key kind of annotations to look out for is the uh, annotations label that is IEA, which basically stands for inferred electronically um, without human curation. Because uh, basically, as you can imagine, even the human genome alone contains, you know, depending on how you count it, roughly like 20,000 genes. And so, and you know, the, the size of, you know, so that's, that's like a huge space of genes that, you know, need to be curated and, and checked for function against the literature. And as you can imagine, the amount of literature out there is like enormous and is, you know, growing increasingly faster and faster. And with, you know, the, with the continuous uh, development of new genomics assays that are genome wide, it's, it's really hard for human curators, no matter how many there are out there, to keep up with this annotation effort. And so um, and gene ontology relies a lot on not just human curators, but also uh, autom so-called automatic annotation of gene functions uh, using computer algorithms. And so we'll talk a little bit more about those in the next slide. But basically, here are... Uh, a set of evidence codes which um, which are used to describe gene function annotations which are generated from uh, mostly uh, experimental, different experimental assays. And so you have things like ID, which technically stands for inferred from some direct assay. Um, you have codes like IGI, which means inferred from genetic interactions, which we'll talk about uh, in, f in a few lectures. Um, you have IC, which generally stands for inferred by curator, which is a little bit, um, uh, which is a little bit more broad of a uh, evidence code. But for the most part, a lot of these uh, evidence codes refer to evidences that are inferred by some kind of direct experiment. And then again, you have this IEA category, which refers to all the computational ways that you can infer gene function um, without doing a physical experiment. And so this is basically a pretty recent figure which shows you across all organisms that um, are being annotated by Go, um, what proportion of the annotations are uh, are due to, or basically are labeled with different evidence codes. And so you can see that um, basically on the far right-hand column, which is the, the most recent statistics for uh, gene ontology as of March this year, um, you can see that a very small proportion of those, not a very small, but a, a definitely a minority of annotations are, uh, you know, have some kind of experimental evidence code. So that's the purple, purple bars. Um, and so most of the, uh, most of the annotations are uh, due to IEA, which again is some kind of electronic annotation or based on phylogenetic analysis, which is the blue bars, which is another form of computational analysis. And so the main point here again is that um, because it's impossible to keep up with <clears throat> all of the many, many studies that are being done uh, to catalog gene function, um, a lot of the gene ontology annotations are done electronically. So the point of the gene ontology evidence codes is mainly that uh, they are basically a disclaimer to let you know that, um, especially for the electronically inferred annotations, uh, you should definitely take them with a grain of salt. And so, uh, 
yeah, they're, they're, the electronically inferred annotations are there just to kind of, uh, in some sense, act as like a hypothesis generator for you. So they're supposed to, they're there for you to use as a guide for um, what possible functions a particular gene might might have. Uh, but you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't trust them with a hundred percent confidence. And so it's worth noting that although gene ontology is is one of the most well known uh, databases that store information about gene function, uh, there's a you know a number of other ones that uh, are also continuously curated and which are used for uh, these kind of gene set enrichment analyses that I talked about earlier. Um, some of the major ones that uh, you, you know you'll definitely see out there are, for example, KEG, which is primarily concerned with actual real pathways as opposed to sets of genes that perform similar function. Uh, there, there's databases like PFAM, which basically record um, what families that uh, different genes are part of. So obviously, because gene duplication is a is one of the driving forces of genome evolution. Um, Many genes belong to larger families of related genes. And so PFAM tells you what families different uh, genes are part of. Um, there's uh, a very kind of well-used database called MSIGDB, which stands for Molecular Signatures Database. And so MSIGDB basically tries to um, take databases like Go and like NCAG and a few other ones and basically merge them into like a larger kind of like meta database of uh, gene sets. And so that's that's also another very popular one.